So, oil. Let's take a look at this oil market. We get Saudi Arabia. Uh, they're going to basically go out to market. Uh, they're not going out to our market. No, well, no, they're not. And so you get oil up this morning, 56 95 You get 271,000 contracts. Let's look at this thing. Yeah. So you got Aramco going to Riyadh, right? The uh, yeah. index over there. And, you know, just to keep it in context, man, they were originally going to pump out 5% of their equity in international markets. They're now going to push out, you know, 3% in a, in a foreign market, which much, much less reporting standards. Um, buyer beware extremely. Oh, I, I wouldn't touch that thing. Yeah, there's, there's and no. the, the valuations. I heard Goldman was saying they might be worth 2.2, 2.3 trillion. And then you had, I forget what company, might have been Bank of America, but a legitimate big analyst yes. saying maybe as low as 1.2 trillion. I mean, this sounds like a WeWork type, you know, where I it's agree. like maybe it's worth 2.4 trillion and an analyst saying maybe it's worth 1.2. Well, then maybe it's worth 600 billion. I don't know, you know, and why would you I, believe anything and, they push out when it's a state owned Saudi Arabia oil? Um, I mean, this is the same country to, to bring things to yeah. reality that just basically killed a U.S. resident. Yeah. On, you know, right. Oh, totally. It's, it's yeah. so buyer beware, to, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm really surprised that they're doing it this quick after we work because it's like, okay, if you, you know, the, the broker dealer community, the banking community, they make a percentage of what is going to get pushed out. Yes. So, of course, they're going to try to justify as high as they can get. Yes. It's just amazing that to me that people would actually. I agree. Buy it. So, well, we'll see. I we'll agree. See. We'll see where it shakes out. And at least some of the people might be protected because it's at least not on the NASDAQ, not on the NYSE, whereas most people won't be buying an equity that's trading over in the Riyadh uh, exchange or right. whatnot. But right. still, man, it's, people are going to get hurt if they buy it and they lose their money. When you have a company like Goldman out there saying it's worth more than $2 trillion, <laughs> and they're very biased by that recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see where this oil market wants to go. This is kind of interesting, actually. I mean, it's like, you know, are they pumping the oil market up at the same time? Yeah. Um, oh, totally. You know, because you're over the swing point now. I mean, that's saying 58. Well, saying 58.19 is game. That's the bottom of the downdraft out here. That was, uh, well, actually, it was an updraft. And the next day was the downdraft. That was uh, September 16th. And that was the attack on those Saudi oil fields. Oh, that's right. Of course. Come on. Look at that that's gap. Right. Come that's on. That's right. We weren't even searching for the story, but no, it's up there, and it's pretty, interesting nonetheless, yeah. right? So they're pulling out all the stops to ensure success for the IPO after the Crown Prince finally decided to offer shares. The kingdom cut taxes on the company for a third time, revealed incentives for investors not to sell, and is considered boosting dividends further. Yet the Saudi government's already conceded the company probably isn't worth the $2 trillion valuation they've long advocated. Well, somebody should tell Goldman Sachs that as they're out there pushing $2 plus trillion. Um, and just to keep in mind, again, you know, there's probably not a lot of investors, I think, who are plowing money into this, even out there listening, thankfully. But when you have a state-owned oil company, right, they can tweak everything in terms of they can shift. So let's say the company's making Boku bucks, all right? You right. invest in the company. They're just crushing it. Well, the state oil, the state decides to just tax the oil company greater. Right. And they take all the profits from the company. And meanwhile, it's still state owned. So it's just kind of shifting it from one bucket to the next. And all they're doing is taking the money from investors in the company to push it back to the state. Meanwhile, the state owns the company. The state gets the taxes. So they're lowering well, all the taxes and, and, ahead of the IPO. But then they could just raise them back up the moment that the IPO is pushed out to the sure. public. And if you want, if depending on how long or short your memory is, folks, okay, you got to remember that the next paragraph there. Aramco published uh, a so-called intention to float on Sunday, the most dramatic change to the Saudi oil industry since the company was nationalized in the 1970s. <laughs> yep. And that's when the kingdom took it over. Sure. You know, so the bottom line is that... And here's where, so Saudi Arabia is aiming for a valuation of 1.6 to 1.8 trillion. Goldman Sachs told investors it's worth 1.6 to 2.3. What, what, is, what is that? You know, I mean, seriously, <laughs> Bank of America, another top bank in the deal, had a bottom range set at 1.2. BNP Paribas looked at 1.42. Um, bank of America is still another top bank in the deal, and oh, they're yeah. still saying 1.2. Right. So be skeptical of even that. Um, you can see what's happening, they're, but they're employing 20 banks, folks, on its IPO. So they're splitting. They're trying to get... Every, I'd say every they get everybody in their pocket. There. Exactly. Exactly. So right. everybody's got a bias as they push this yeah. thing out. Yeah. And they got to figure out, they got to get to a price that they can just push so much out. And yeah. If it's only 3%, that's, that, I don't think that's going to be hard for 20 banks to basically get clients. Right. right. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but good luck in a year or so. 
Exactly. If, no, if, I, where's that price going to no be, doubt, right? right? And there, so they had a net income last year of 111 billion, most profitable company of any corporation, more than Apple, Google, um, and Exxon combined. But the company's pledged to pay a minimum of 75 billion in dividends. What happens in a downturn? What happens if they decide to say, you know what, we're going to raise the taxes on that company to 85% on an annual basis because the state needs the money from the state-owned oil company? And I'd, I'd question the as aspect of them going public, period. I agree, yeah. Because of the fact that, okay, if you're in a great business, folks, okay, and you have plenty of money. Which, which they do, Which they right? do. Yeah. Why are you basically saying, okay, now you can have some money public, right? That's just yeah. kind of not how it goes. And we can see... You know, I mean, there's there's alternates to oil right now, and yeah, it's alternatives. Away, yeah, little by little. I mean, most of the time you go public because you don't have the capital required right. to grow the business at the right. rate that you can grow it at. Um, Saudi Arabia has had a private company that says from 1970. You're talking about yes. 50 years. Right. Seems like they've had their infrastructure built out. They're just selling it off because they think it might be great to diversify. Right. Well, guess what? You don't diversify if you have the best company out there, no. right? You keep your share. You pull a you pull a Bezos or a Bill Gates, and you hold one company, one share, for the life of your life, and yeah. you never sell it if you if you can avoid it. There's no doubt. Yeah.